Welcome to a relatively cool and chilly Donington Park. Vast crowds of people pouring in to see round three of the 1999 World Superbike Championships here in the East Midlands in Great Britain. You can see who won the 1998 races. It was that little man, Norrie Hager. Hager Lout, as the flags are announcing him, announcing him around this circuit, this 2.5-mile circuit, just uh, 7 miles, 12 kilometres from Derby. The lap record, 1996, set by Troy Corser on his way to the World Championship that year, 133.474. Well, it's a 133.356 pole position we've got. There you can see how cloudy it is and how cool it is. Track temperature 30 degrees, ambient temperature just 9 degrees centigrade, and not much of a wind to blow that away, although it's a pretty cool wind that we have got. Quite a change from yesterday, so these guys, these Superbike World Championship contenders, will be taking it steady during the early stages because they've got not much warmth in those tyres, not much warmth on that track to sort themselves out. They, of course, will be warming up for 20 minutes prior to the first race, which will be at noon UK time. We'll be bringing that live to you on Eurosport. I'm Jack Burnicle. Alongside me, I've got a man who's ridden many racing laps around this uh, beautiful circuit and that's a former national champion Rob Orm. And on pole position here, rather startlingly, after a wonderful performance, not only in Super Pole, but also in a qualifying session yesterday morning, Pierre Francesco Kili gives Suzuki, the Alstara Corona Suzuki team, their first pole position. Suzuki only their second ever pole position in World Superbikes. And uh, who knows, perhaps he might even achieve their second win, but uh, perhaps their qualifying tires, their Dunlop qualifying tires, are better than the Dunlop tyres that they'll have to use in the race. They're hoping that the race distance of 25 laps will suit those Dunlop tyres. There's a 20-minute session and already three, two minutes of it gone as the field pours past us into their second lap. And uh, we're looking at number 42. Number 42, Jamie Hayden, who's qualified brilliantly on the second row of the grid on the Clarion Suzuki. And uh, he's uh, part of a strong British contingent following him is fourth row of the grid man, three times pretty superbike champion on the Virgin Yamaha, Niall McKenzie. The front row of the grid is Frankie Kelly, Carl Fogarty, Troy Corsa, and amazingly Akira Yanagawa, who super polled himself briskly from the fourth row of the grid to the front. What sort of chance, Rob, do you think these boys will stand? Jamie Hayden and Niall McKenzie we're looking at. Are you expecting a good performance from the uh, the home British Championship yes, boys? Yes, I am indeed, Jack. The qualifying yesterday was spectacular, whether it was for pole position or last place on the grid. And uh, seven British riders out there on the World Superbike grid. Oh, and Akira Yanagawa taking the scenic route, a little bit of off-piste for Akira. Uh, but at least it's in the morning warm-up and doesn't matter in the race. But uh, back to the British riders. Uh, Jack, yes, they will put on a good uh, performance and certainly get uh, some points uh, in the bag. They went very quickly, very soon in qualifying uh, on Friday and Saturday. And uh, the Europeans, the Central Europeans, traditionally uh, leave it till the dying minutes of the last session of qualifying to get in the spectacular times. And we were thrilled to see the, the, the feast of uh, that skill by Pierre Francesco Killy. Killy, of course, on the way, so far so good for Killy, on the way to uh, fulfilling his prediction of you don't need a Ducati to win a World Superbike race. And as you said, Jack, uh, on target for putting the Suzuki for only the second time on the, the, the winner's rostrum, at the top of the winner's rostrum. Uh, last year, Keiichi Kitagawa, we might remember at Sugo, the only Suzuki World Superbike, Superbike win. So uh, Pierre-Francesco Killy, in the dying minutes of the last session, we saw him come into pits lane, change the tyre to a qualifying tyre, and with just one minute to go, banged in a super fast time to put him second on the grid, and then we saw him in Super Pole destroy everybody and go on pole. So, so far so good, he's on course. But we've got this man, Akira Yanagawa, going extremely well, even in the cold conditions this morning, Jack. And he's very, very much happier with his 1999 Kawasaki. He was telling us yesterday that uh, it's a more comfortable power delivery. The uh, slightly smaller diameter front forks have made the, uh, the bike handle better. It still slides around a lot, especially when Akira is <laughs> pushing it. Yes. And uh, we do know that his 1998 bike in the hands of Stevie Hislop is causing the Scotsman uh, all sorts of problems. He was pleasantly surprised at how rapidly he was able to go, considering how much the bike was moving around underneath him. And. Uh, Akira's main concern is that those Dunlop tyres are good, 
and that they'd be good for 25 laps. Otherwise, he was very, very happy indeed to have chuckled his way from the fourth to the first row of the grid. And there he is, having to uh, dodge his way round the number 18 bike of the Colombian Carlos Macias, who has caused a fair number of problems to people. Welcome back to Donington Park and the spectacular invigorating sight on a cool morning of number 41, Nori Haga, now racing the R7 Yamaha. Remember, two race wins here on the, R, on the YZ750, the, the older model that he rolled last year with tremendous verve to those two wins. Uh, Haga a little disappointed with himself in um, Super Bowl, but uh, we weren't disappointed with the action he gave us because uh, he, he went uh, almost... Uh, almost folded the whole thing up going into Goddard's during a Super Bowl lap. It cost him valuable seconds and put him back into uh, the third row of the grid. But Norrie Hager, he's dangerous from any pe any part of the grid. We know that. But oh, look at him already. Just right testing, on the cage. <laughs> just <laughs> testing those Michelins out with a little skating here. Now, oh, and Fujiwara, number 21, the man who just missed out on Super Bowl. He was 17th at the end of qualifying. Uh, he, all, he had a, a big get-off as well during uh, qualifying yesterday, which didn't help him any. Fujiwara's obviously been uh, investigating the possibility of, of, of the lawnmower again. And here we have those British guys again. Look at this, number 42, Jamie Hayden, the Virgin Yamaha of Niall McKenzie. And there's number five, Colin Edwards. Colin Edwards, who's um, perhaps a little disappointed with being on the third row of the grid on a, on a course that we think suits the Honda rather well, Rob. Yes, the, we were saying in qualifying how much better the Hondas were, were able to get the power down at the back wheel. Uh, watching in particular the, the Melbourne section of, the, of Donington Park, which, as we all know, is heavy braking, a mixture of heavy braking and very aggressive accelerating. And uh, unlike uh, previous races, the Hondas uh, were very balanced coming out of those corners, able to get the enormous power down, and uh, that was equated to uh, the both the Hondas, Aaron Slight and Colin Edwards, being the two fastest bikes around Donington. And, with not that many straights, we're just coming onto the main straight now. You've got to be having good drive out of the corners to get the slingshot effect down the straight. This one being the uh, case in point here. Colin Edwards head buried into the tank. And uh, together with Aaron Slight, the Hondas, two fastest bikes in qualifying. So I think they've got the, the balance right. The mix on the Hondas is very effective indeed. Colin Edwards led the qualifying sessions for a long time and uh, then was uh, sort of overtaken at the... Uh at the death, shall we say, and look at him squirming those rear Michelin's. He's looking very comfortable this on the is, back wheel. This is where we see, just coming out of Melbourne Loop. Yeah, the Honda back wheel, historically, we've seen sliding around and squirming a little bit to, like Akira Yanagawa Kawasaki likes to be set up, but out of Melbourne Loop and here out of Goddard. So Honda, yeah, no problems at all. Going most of the time in the direction that Colin Edwards points it. And he's setting fourth fastest time in this fairly meaningless session in the warm-up. And uh, that's Colin Meaningless Edwards. to us here in the booth, not to the riders. I beg your pardon. <laughs> and uh, as regards time, I should have added, Carl Fogarty getting his head down. He just missed out on Super Bowl, but was perfectly delighted to be in second place on the grid. And um, we, uh, we, we know that that is the position that he wants to start from. And there's Troy Corsa's... Uh, Fiance keeping an eye on things. He was uh, slightly disappointed, I felt, third place on the grid, having inevitably, as Troy so often does, uh, fairly much dominated qualifying up until that point. But uh, Carl Fogarty, his teammate, the two of them have worked the Ducati out so well together, and uh, then they leave their differences until race day. So this is the day when they cease to be teammates and become very much raw individuals, and they don't come much more raw than this man. Carl Fogarty. There's a lot of support for him around here. The traffic jams coming in here were so amazing that uh, I would like to point out to you that the commentators that you're listening to almost didn't arrive. You might say that's a good thing. Well, uh, Fogarty's <laughs> just gone the fastest of the lot so far, 134.045, which is it's darn fast, Rob, considering how chilly it is out there. It is indeed, and uh, that's a good link, that is, considering how chilly it is out there. It's also foggy out there on the track, but uh, something that we should mention uh, Jack, is that the first five qualifiers are all under the uh, 1998 lap record set by Troy Corsa. And uh, we said that was due in, oh, sparks from Carl's, I think, uh, titanium toe sliders on the boots we were mentioning yesterday, but dramatic nevertheless. But uh, five riders all under the uh, lap record, 1998 lap record set by Troy Corsa, set uh, also by very fast machines and riders, but the track surface, we must bear that in mind, has been buffed during the closed season so that the track surface offering a lot more grip 
which of course helps Hondas to uh, get drive out of the corners, helps Ducatis, and helps that man, Pierre, Ch Pierre Francesco Killy. But uh, we're looking at Carl Fogarty at the moment, and uh, set his second fastest time, uh, certainly pole position after the second practice session, but second fastest with uh, Super Pole with consummate ease, Jack. He didn't seem to do that many laps. Carl has got a great race set up, so we're watching him go around at the circuit at the moment. Uh, for him, high-speed tour, but uh, looking like it's a fast high-speed tour because uh, I think this time is going to be very close to yesterday's qualifying. I mean, Carl is looking lean and mean. Broken that 134, yeah. which is quite something because that's very, very close to the new fastest lap that was set by uh, Pierre Francesco Killy himself and others during Super Poland qualifying yesterday. But, look, but looking so bad. <laughs> Troy Corsa at Donington Park, the man whose 1996 lap record looks likely to get broken during the course of races today if the weather holds up, and at the moment it's cool and overcast, but uh, hopefully it's going to at least stay that way, certainly stay dry. He's been looking absolutely terrific. He's got the bike so beautifully set up. He said it's very similar to that 1996 machine, and also getting quite close to that. Look at those titanium toe-enders. I mean, that's just <laughs> to uh, distract the opposition if they're following you, and they just think, wow, where are those sparks coming from? I'd better back off. So 27-year-old Troy Corsa, the, uh, the man who's uh, almost had a, a perfect career cu curriculum vitae from 1993 Australian Superbike champ to 1994 AMA US Superbike champ to second in the World Superbike series in 1995 and World Superbike champion in 1996. Quite astonishing. Those four years were just about the perfect career move, I reckon, Rob. That's right. And uh, the, then at the end of the 1998 season, Troy... Troy Corsa seemed poised for the championship win, but then that was, uh, well, the form book was thrown out of the window, smashed out of the window, we remember, at uh, Sugo at the final round last year. Uh, Troy crashed this time in the race. It was the morning warm-up, and Corsa will remember that. We we've watched him just a few minutes ago going around fairly cautiously because it was the morning warm-up at Sugo where he crashed his bike, crashed the Suzuki, and broke some ribs, and really that destroyed his opportunity to win the 1998 championship, and of course, Carl Fogarty went on to win that. But Corsa, lots in hand, very quick in qualifying, coming off the back of two race wins, of course, in Phillip Island, and uh, smashing the lap record there, so lots of confidence for Troy Corsa, but carefully and steadily, for him at least, uh, around the morning warmer warm-up here at Donington Park. Cool conditions, but Akira Yanagawa we're looking at now on the four bike, the Kawasaki. Uh, we'll watch him go around, Craner Curves, Hollywood Craner Curves, and now into the old hairpin. The Kawasaki is moving around a lot, but we're used to Akira Yanagawa getting the bike set up like that. He likes it a little bit loose, shall we say, a little bit like uh, <laughs> Noriyuki Haga's Yamaha. So, folks, don't be too scared if you see this man, Noriyuki Haga, uh, well, Noriyuki Haga, chasing Noriyuki Haga, Akira Yanagawa on the Kawasaki, the bike slipping and sliding around. Yanagawa will watch him on the split time, coming through the double apex right-hander at Coppice, onto the fastest part of the circuit, and uh, we watch the split time now. Yanagawa, 53, 54, 45, chasing Fogarty's time there. Well, it's just 0.63 slower, but like you said, Jack, not really too much to be proved here in the morning warm-up at Donington Park. And, uh, well, why not to show that you're supporting the great man himself? Because so, Donington Park really looking a little glum time. under these uh, well, uh, high clouds. After the uh, Super Bowl yesterday, Chris, he, we didn't actually speak with him. We saw him uh, being interviewed by Sky. A 134.009 uh, uh, in second place. Um, so he's beginning to warm up. Troy Corsa in third place, 134.32. That's pretty good for a cautious man. Aaron Slight in fourth place. We haven't seen the New Zealander yet during the course of this session, but he's motoring around there just on the 134.3s with Nori Haga. And Doriano Romboni, number 20. Doriano Romboni, the 30-year-old 30 30 year Italian, making his uh, debut in World Superbikes this year. He planted his Ducati in first place on the second row of the grid. I think uh, Dariano Romboni, the, the understated rider, really. I, I mentioned yesterday in qualifying that he was the uh, fastest and best finishing non-full works Ducati uh, at uh, the last round in Phillip Island. So Dariano Romboni. But he, of course, uh, is the most uh, winningest of pole positions. He's got the greater number of pole positions than anybody else in World Superbike. That is, uh, of course, TC.
and it's going to be the uh, all the testing in Friday and Saturday practice will be thrown out of the window. People will then have to take guesstimations as to what tyre compound and tyre pressures to use for the actual race itself. Apologies, folks, for the picture, because um, we haven't just got that much going on at the moment. We're having problems with that. No. And we're back with our slightly broken down pictures. We feel that that's better than nothing. I'd rather you saw these slightly broken down pictures of Colin Edwards and Peter Goddard rather than just uh, a still photograph of the start straight at Donington. So here we have Peter Goddard chasing Colin Edwards. Goddard on the Aprilia has had a desperately bad time. He missed out by two places on entering Super Bowl. He's back on the fifth row of the grid and uh, talking Whoa, to... Wow, look at the blackie that Colin Edwards just laid. Check the back wheel out on that Honda. Oh. That is a lean, lean rear. Wow, that was so exciting. And Jack, it's because the track surface is cold. With yes. something like 10 degrees less ambient temperature, uh, we were driving into the circuit this morning and uh, windows wound up, heaters on. But uh, that is causing the back tyres, the front tyres to be sliding as they're braking, accelerating around the corners. But Carl Fogarty, uh, this morning in qualifying, touring round, high speed tour, but, uh, but the high speed the, tour was the on the pace, 3. that's 3. right. 989, very much on the pace. Goddard sadly not on the pace. saying that uh, they were having real problems with the Aprilia because uh, there is such an infinite number of adjustments, both to the chassis, to the engine position, to the steering head angles, and that we're not having any really base information to work on. They were finding that they were tending to get a bit lost, and they'd arrived here at uh, Donington Park. He said familiarity with the Ducati didn't help at all because uh, adjustments they made to the Aprilia that they felt would benefit them were actually having quite the opposite effect. So even someone as experienced, as vastly experienced as Peter Goddard, wasn't able to sort the bike out yet. But we're watching Colin Edwards, who hopefully is very happy with the sorting out of his Castrol Honda and uh, is still going pretty quickly. 134.794 getting his head down and um, reassuring himself that he's still quick on that Honda after his slight disappointment in Super Bowl. He's one man who doesn't like Super Bowl, we know that. And uh, Colin Edwards, here we take another look at uh, Edwards. And uh, the fact, look how much he's moving around yeah. on that bike and look how much the bike is moving him around. And look at the, on the exit of the, the right hand here, here at the S's, what... Uh, oh, look at the front, like I said, the front wheel protesting under braking and the back tyre just losing grip and stepping out a little bit but uh, Colin Edwards into the Melbourne loop this is the acid test for if the bike is set up right the suspension is balanced correctly for acceleration out of there the, the, the least movement you can get and the more drive you can get equates to better lap times and here's a celebratory really from uh, Kiri Yanagawa he set Super Polar light absolutely set the Fuchs Silkeline Super Polar light yesterday when he uh, he set that very, very early t fast time, and that gave, which gave him almost a second advantage and set a heck of a target for the rest to get to. Warm up then, 133.989. Carl Fogarty, the only man to dip below 134 as the uh, course car goes, safety car goes out beneath us right now, beneath our commentary position. Edward Slight and Troy Corsa in there. Look at this lot. Fujiwara, Chris Walker, who's on the second row of the grid with a brilliant performance on his kit at Kawasaki. Gregorio Levia, who. Um, had a disastrous Super Bowl. He was uh, actually right up near the front during qualifying, looking terrific. And then the front wheel of his factory Kawasaki, the front brake, jammed on as he set out to do his flying lap. And, um, and there was a puff of smoke that almost got thrown off and just had to cruise around that lap and found himself 15th place on the grid and uh, only saved from the ignominy of 16th position by the fact that Vito Goreski had already thrown his R7 Yamaha up the road. And look at those top speeds. John Reynolds at the top on 256.5 on the Revy Red Bull Ducati. Nothing wrong with yours, top speed, JR. Edwards up there, on Boney up there, Slight and Levia all above 250 kilometers per hour as they come plunging down underneath that distant Dunlop Bridge. Indeed, um, John Reynolds is on the third row of the grid, just one place ahead of his Revy Red Bull teammate, Sean Emmett, who's got first place of, of the uh, fourth row. And flags and banners like this abound all around the track. It's quite extraordinary how much is uh, how much is up and running here for Foggy. You can see just a little few of them there. In fact, they might even be the ones that are just across the road. I think they are the ones that are directly opposite our commentary position here. <laughs> oh, and I like the hand-drawn shark eyes. I think they're brilliant. There's some very, very astute man in amongst the vast traffic queues we have.
had to drive past who uh, was selling Eng large England flags. And nice to see that the Italians are here to support uh, Pier Francesco Chili. He's given them that Super Bowl time. He might even have a watch to give them if they manage to catch him later on. And that's where you get the... Uh, and our man Carl makes us smile when he wins by a mile. Well, that's the only time he's going to make himself smile, so let's hope that he does manage to do that for the fans here today. There's every possibility that he will. He's very relaxed, very happy with his machine, and um, I reckon they're going to will him on to victory, Rob, these fans. And there we see the Craner Curves, the intimidating downhill section at Donington Park, which uh, Carl Fogarty has clearly stated is his favourite part of Donington. He says he can get the Ducati turned really quickly and make up uh, some time there, and maybe even uh, line people up and pass them at the bottom of that hill. Uh, uh, good luck, TT. Well, that, that's a little bit later in the year, but certainly Carl Fogarty has said that he's able to go quicker than just about everybody down the Craner Curves and uh, breaks and then into the right-hander at the old hairpin and uh, makes some time up. Uh, you described that, did you not, as uh, like riding off the end of the world? Yes, it is. You're just coming out of uh, Craner Curves and then you flick left and it's over the edge. So don't forget, we'll bring you the Superbike Race 1 live, 12.55 CET and uh, half past three CET, that's 11.55 UK time and half past, and, uh, half past two on uh, uh, half past two on uh, English time super sports live 25 past four CET 25 past three in the UK the second superbike race and don't forget also sidecar world cup for the first time here on Eurosport half past five CET half past four in UK time and we've got uh, motocross coming from Venezuela later this evening as well 9.30, 9.30 CET, that's 8.30 UK time from Venezuela. And also in there is the Bosch Spark Plug Grand Prix kart racing. That's half past six, half past five UK time. So a feast of motorsport here on Eurosport during the course of today. And uh, myself, Jack Burnicle, and alongside me, Rob Orm. And uh, hopefully if he has a decent result in the super sports race and cares to join us, Jamie Whittam will be back with us later this afternoon as well. So if you can't get here to join the crowds at Donington Park, just sit there with the beers in front of the television and enjoy our coverage right here. Thank you.